On this episode of the Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast, I talk with Sandy from the Marilla Country Store. For many Western New Yorkers, the Marilla Country Store is Marilla and has become a destination location in its own right. For generations, the store has been one of a handful of go-to happy places for the entire region. It's a really special place that means many things to many people, and Sandy and her husband Paul couldn't have done a better job of curating and stewarding this piece of living Western New York history. It's actually the oldest continually operating store in New York State, and is really something to see if you've never been there before. And if you have, well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Doing a little bit of research now, you know, obviously I grew up uh, in the area here, so we would ride our bikes out to your shop. That was like uh-huh. our thing. Like we would go swimming sure. at Northrop. <laughs> First sure. we, would, we would go swimming at Northrop, and then we would stop at the little store there at yep. uh, at Northrop, and then we would ride our bikes all the way up to your place. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, yeah, and we had some friends on <laughs> Soul Road, <laughs> so oh. it was kind of like it was like uh, peanuts. Like we would pick up kids yeah. as we went along, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so by the time That's we got awesome. out to your shop, there was like ten of us. <laughs> Again. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was awesome, actually. But I didn't realize, like, the history of the store, honestly. I mean, when you're a kid growing up here, you just take it for granted that, yes, yes. you know, it's, like, kind of just a fixture. Um, yeah, But yeah. is it true that you're the oldest store? Is it the oldest operating store, obviously, in New York, correct? Yes, I believe it's the oldest continuing continuous operating store in the state of New York, as, as far as we can tell. It's 171 years this year. Wow. And it has always been... Um, a general store. It's always been open in the same building. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty cool history. Yeah, that's incredible. And when you think yeah. about the fact that, you know, the Northeast here, uh, you know, the townships that we have and the age of the townships and even dealing with like a New York City and Long Island, right. uh, you know, and you have the oldest operating continuous yes. store in New York. That's an honor and a privilege yeah. and it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <I know. laughs> Like no right, pressure, no pressure. <laughs> none at all. <laughs> I mean, you guys Don't are doing the ones that close it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys are doing great out there. Well, and you know, you're synonymous with Marilla. Um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, do you see? So, do you see that with your shop? Do you? I mean, do you know that in the way that the customers know it? Because you're inside the Goldfish Bowl, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we get um, we obviously get a lot of visitors from outside the area, both Western New York. Uh, in the greater area and even farther afield. So, um, yeah, I would say anybody who kind of visits Marilla or comes to visit folks that live in the area, Mm -hmm. especially they love to bring um, out of town people by and show them the store and show them the museum. So it has uh, certainly become a bit of a destination. Yeah. Uh, in Western New York and, and beyond. It's a super cool place. And and so I don't know where I was when I was a kid, <laughs> but I did I don't did you have the museum when I was a kid? I mean I'm fifty three, so I don't know. Yeah, no, we did not. Um so when my parents purchased the store in the late nineteen seventy, they um worked really hard to purchase as much of the sort of antique stock samples and fixtures and those kinds of things as they could. And their goal was to keep it with the store so that they could protect the heritage. So, you know, that was not an easy thing for them to do and they really worked hard and and, uh, had to spend a lot of extra money to make sure a lot of those things stayed with the store. So over the years when they had it, um, it was actually, uh, much of it was on display upstairs, Mm -hmm. but it was closed to the public. Like the upstairs was not uh, store space at that time. Um, but they would bring tour groups through and um, kids from school sometimes through and show them. Right. And then when Paul and I bought the store in 2000, not long after, we took um, kind of the one room at the end of the upstairs. It used to be the wallpaper room, as a matter of fact. Okay. And we um, moved everything that they had collected. We unboxed um, lots and lots of stuff that they had retained with the store and kind of set up the museum as a a room that folks could visit and just wander around and and kind of see things. So that's been, that's been really nice. I think it's great for people to walk in and, Oh my, I saw that in my grandmother's house. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, then we've had people who have donated things that, you know, if their grandparents or their parents <laughs> passed away and they found things sure. in the attic with the store's price tag on. Well, they, they think of it. you, right? <laughs> yeah, they actually have donated it back to the museum. So we're about out of space for that. But um, it's been it's been very fun for people to, you know, be engaged and be concerned about um, keeping the history alive. Sure. Well, you're a steward now. 
Really? Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's what your folks were, and that's what you are too. I mean, there's this yeah. uh, an aspect of uh, your business and your livelihood, and just you as a person now, and Paul and you know, your staff. Really, I mean, you guys are curating yeah. the store, and it's yeah, a piece exactly. of living history. You know. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, and it's just been. I mean, since I've been a kid, like I said, I, mean, I grew up around here, and you. I think. I, I think I was telling you that when I was in the shop, my dad used to swim at the swimming hole down the street yeah of course yes, yeah of course. and they lived in like the first ward so they would get up in the old jalopy with like the rumble oh. seat <laughs> and there was eight kids <laughs> an uncle, wow. you know an aunt and the parents and they would ride all the way out this you know that's back in the How 40s awesome. yeah so that, yeah. that was a while ago and uh, they would come great. up there and, you know my dad would we'd pass the store and my dad would say oh that's been here since you know <laughs> so yeah uh, yes. you know it's just it's an incredible piece of history you have there and that's that cool. back the back room the history area i just love it the museum and uh, yes. I went up there the first time uh, when I saw you that day, actually. And yes. uh, it's just so cool. And it's ironic that people are bringing stuff back with tags. Uh, yeah, I know. It's so fun. It's so fun. And it's fun for us because we have, um, gosh, we have a whole stack of uh, guest books that we've had over the years that people have signed that they visited. And when we have a chance to really look through those, there are people from everywhere, from um, from the world, from wow. Australia and Europe, Um all over the country, of course, people who have visited. So they've been in the area and uh, someone has brought them by. And that's really cool, I think, to just know that people from yeah. you know, all over and all walks of life have visited and sort of shared the same experience. Gosh, you could probably, you could put like um, a map and like a war room yeah, map with pins and then the book underneath it. That would be yeah, cool, you know? That's a great <laughs> you idea. You could even yeah. leave a little pin box out and say like, pin your location on yes, the map, you know? That would be awesome. Idea. Well, I, you know, and that's the thing. You guys are renowned uh, for the shop and you have done such a great job. I mean, I don't oh, really, you. I don't remember the store. I, it looks uh, more... Um, I think you've curated. I can't remember when I was a kid. I just remember going in there and just mm-hmm. feeding, the, you know, feeding ourselves candy till we were yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in those but. days, it, it kind of was your typical corner general store. So, right. you know, milk and butter and eggs and, of course, candy. And even in those days, you know, before there was a Walmart that, you know, was, was nearby or any kind of convenience store, that was the destination. So um, in the real old days when people were settling their land and their farms out here uh, it was the only store in town and right. people would come on a saturday and they pile into their buggies and uh, horse-drawn carriages and they would come to the store and they would do all of their shopping of course so clothing and material and boots and farm tools um everything that they needed really to live because there just wasn't wasn't any other option so over the years um it really has the heritage in that kind of general store. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you'd come in and barter vegetables and eggs from your farm and you'd get, <laughs> um, you'd get flour and right. fabric to make your clothes and, you know, nails and things that you couldn't make on the farm. So uh, that really, and it, what's cool is in the museum, there's actually the old ledger from those days, which shows the accounts that people had for bartering oh, wow. um, and running a tab. So very cool. But it, so it really, through the years, it has been kind of that general store as, as we took it on in 2000. And of course the landscape changes sure. and now, you know, there are convenience stores popping up everywhere yep. and lots of options for people to get, you know, milk, for instance. Right. Um, that's where we kind of looked for a more unique mix. And sure. we went into bulk foods, um, which are uh, helpful to people, great uh, pricing, um, fresh, yep. uh, things that they can't necessarily find a lot of places. And then, of course, expanded the gifts and home decor and really went into into that big. So trying to keep it relevant to what is important in people's lives and as a destination what would people um, enjoy when they came to visit and how did how could we you know come up with just a mix of things that are interesting that are necessary but um, also just fun and how they can really enjoy their shopping experience so we have heavy balls yeah you want to give them like you want to accentuate their experience you know and give them something unique to take with themselves and give them something to talk about and i mean you can't go in there and not leave with a smile honestly right it's just that type of place and how awesome is it you get to work there you get to you get to do that that's like it's so neat to like be able to curate and steward something like that and steer it it because the the, the market's diversified so much and uh, competition is just fierce but you you guys have a beautiful niche market there 
I mean, that's yeah, like, that's we've been lucky. Yeah, I mean, well, it's been earned over 107 yeah, years. I mean, we, you talk about you know earning your keep. <laughs> that's yeah, not going exactly. anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and I love the idea. I think that uh, what you've done there too is the retention of the building and yeah. the sense that you get when you walk in. I exactly. mean, you just feel it. You yeah, know. it still has the original wood floors, um, the really wide planks, yeah, the, the old um, hand-hammered <laughs> nails, the creaking floors, right. yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of it, all, all still original, and, you know, we invest in maintaining it and, and uh, protecting the building and keeping it going. Um, you know, it's still got um, the old staircases and gas yeah. lights and countertops and things like that that uh, would be irreplaceable today. So we try to... You know, it's important to maintain the sense that this is a, um, you know, this is in fact a, a really old building and has a lot of history to it. So, um, you know, we never really tried to modernize it over time. And you know, thank God for that, really. Yeah. You know, yeah, because there's yeah, nothing worse. Maintain. Even if like somebody, you know, somebody came along and you know, for whatever reason, you're like, okay, here's this business, and then it would just, you can't yeah. do that to that place. Yeah. Now, are you on a historical register at all? A registry? Uh, we are not. Um, not something that we've pursued and uh just just in the past it hasn't been something that's been pursued yeah. um well you shouldn't so, because yeah. aren't the laws like so strict that you because i know yeah it yeah. would be difficult i think to do things that we do need to do to maintain the building and sure. to um you know make it accessible to people and um you know, a good experience for people. So as it would be a nice to have, but I'm not sure it's um, something that, that we would pursue. Yeah, there was a town that I lived in in California that had a lot of buildings on a historic register. And a lot of people were like, don't, because we could have done it. And people are like, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> don't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Because there's like 10 guys difficult. show up at your house and you got a can of paint. You're like, what? What did I do? Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. So no, I totally get that. Um, yeah, so yeah. now the store, so when did you guys switch over? So your parents, when they had it, it was still almost in a crossed period, right? Like it kind of was still the old school yes. store. Yeah, it was definitely the old school general store. I mean, they had groceries, cans of soup and milk and, oh, cool. and bread. And um, they they evolved as well. Uh, I don't know if you remember the days of videos being yes, able to rent I do. videos. I do, I do. And uh, they brought videos <laughs> yeah. in and they rented videos. And that was a real convenience to, you know, local people who didn't have a mail sure. service or, or um, any way to get videos. So they um, also kind of kept up with the times and um, looked at what people needed and wanted and provided um, that to them. So you, so you, it has, you, you it, got it hardwired has with that, right? I mean, Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So it's evolved. And of course, videos went away. Other things came in. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and just as as competition and other easy access points for things like groceries became available to folks, that's where we, you know, switched to something more unique, like the bulk food right. and, um, you know, just went for some different things that still um, say country store. Um but just a little more unique experience. Well, that's half the fun of the business too, right? I mean, it really is. Right. I mean, because it's great to be, and you can spot trends and you can spot things that maybe yes. other people haven't even started yet, you know, and you're right, like, oh, exactly. this would be awesome to put it yeah. in the shop. And it's so cool when you do that and you follow your gut and you follow your intuition and you see something take yeah. off, you know? Yeah, it's very <laughs> fun. Like, it's just yeah. a smart move, but you, and you learn. So you see, so like me, you're a second generation. So my yeah. parents yes. had a, yes. oh, yeah. And don't you think, so I have a theory about this. It's a completely <laughs> uneducated, uh, <laughs> But I will just throw it your way and see what you say about it because I okay. really I've seen this time and time again. So as I was doing my older show, I was running across second, third generation business owners. And mm -hmm. I think so when I came up in the restaurant with my parents, so I was almost um it was kind of in my blood in a different way. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you yeah. have a um I don't want to say like a second uh sight or intuition with it, but you have some type yeah. of guttural instinct with the yes. business that is yes. almost like just on a pure, like I can scan the shop and I totally yeah. know what we need and I can read yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You yep, know? Exactly. And yes, so that's very true. So you feel the same way. So you can kind of yeah. see that in your business. Like you have an yeah. instinctive ability to read the business in a way that you're almost like, wow, how did I do that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yeah. I think that's very true. And I think just from, from growing up in it and being exposed to it as an early age and also you know, interacting with customers, you know, as a young person and understanding how you provide customer service and what that looks like and, and how people interact with the business. I mean, all of that was just invaluable and in, in kind of um, 
grasping what it needed and how to provide you know a good experience for yeah, people. Yeah, it becomes second nature to you, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, yeah. And so uh, that's great that you say that. And I, I've started to bring this up lately only because I never really brought it up on my old show, but uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a validity to it, and I think it's yeah, great. I agree. I, and there's such a you know you can't teach that. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It's something you you observe, and I think as you as you work in it and you know, see your parents um, struggle with issues and make decisions. It, it is kind of an osmosis that takes place. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect word for that too. And I remember sometimes when you're a kid, you and I don't mean any disrespect to my parents yeah. or anybody else's uh, parents yeah. that ran businesses, but you're almost like, don't do it. But you can't, you don't have yeah. any power. <laughs> you yeah, <know>? yeah. <laughs> you can't stop it. So you're like, yeah. I, and I don't know, I, you know, it's not like you're, you're certainly not smarter than them. You certainly right, don't have right, as much right. life experience, but that's what I'm speaking to because I remember that several times where you just had this odd, you're like, how do I know that? <laughs> but I think it right. just it becomes it, yeah. it becomes you in a way. And it's so, yeah. yeah. And when you get to take something over like that, it's such an honor. And I think yeah. that uh, your ability to grow it just becomes so instinctive. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think a, that's very true. You know, and then you have your parents' legacy too. It's not only yes. just the business. So, yep, exactly. That's um, very important. So how did your parents come by the business? Um, they were, let's see, my father was actually an air traffic controller and worked oh, wow. at the Buffalo Airport. And, uh, you know, sort of getting to the latter stages of his career and I think looking forward to what they might do next. Right. And, you know, they're very, they were very community minded people. And my father's been a part of Marilla Kalanis for over 50 years and, mm -hmm. um, you know, very engaged in the community. So I think when the opportunity for the store kind of came up, I think they sort of pursued it and thought, saw it as not only a, a good investment, but as something they would enjoy doing and could maintain for the sake of the community. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. My phone is ringing. Let That's me, okay. I don't know how to shut off the, <laughs> I guess I can <laughs> shut off the ringer here. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. See, yeah. and so your dad, this was kind of like a second career then? Yes, it definitely was. Wow! Yep. What a yep, talk about a second was. career. Yeah, right? yeah, totally different from uh, from what his original career was, but but perfect. You know, very he's a very personable um, person and really enjoys people and enjoys the community and being involved. And uh, right. it was just a great fit for what they enjoy doing. Well, after being an air traffic, so that's a super, super high pressure job. You're it kind is. of insular, right? And then yes. I'm sure like that was probably his involvement in the community. And then yes. he just was like, man, I got to hang out with people. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 definitely. A very, very um, high contrast to what being an air traffic, air traffic controller sure. is all about. Um, so, but, so they came into the business and they just basically were maintaining it or did they right away start maybe thinking about, Hey, we can start diversifying what we do yeah, here. I think they, yeah, they definitely started diversifying it. Um, uh, you know, bringing in, uh, fresh things, different things just, and you know, um, the store had been, Mrs. Moncow had owned the store for a number of years at that point. And, you know, she was, um, elderly and just, it was hard for her to maintain it. Um, so I think they came in and kind of just did some freshening up and, um, you know, streamlining the stock and then also getting some new things in right. and just, uh, you know, keeping it going as something that was a service to the community, Sure. but definitely just, you know, keeping it the old country store, but, um, you know, trying to just bring it, bring it back and bring it forward a little bit. At the same yeah. Time. You know, and there's certain pockets when I drive around, uh, and I bet you, I'm not the only one that does this. Whenever I pass your store, I just get happy. I don't even have to go in. But I'm sure there are tens of thousands of people oh, that that's pass. Very nice. Right. But it's just, it's, it's such a happy memory and yeah. it's such a great thing to see. And you want yeah, to see. It's a happy memory for a lot of people. You're right. Who, yeah. you know, who, same thing as you grew up here and rode their bikes down for penny candy. And, right. you know, a um, lot of good, good vibes around that. Yeah. And you want to see that your business, I mean, you're doing great and you want to see it continue to do great. And in the face of like what we're all, so I grew up in a small family business and, mm -hmm. you know, every one of us that succeeds is a great thing. You know, yeah, it doesn't matter definitely. what industry. And now we're facing these monolithic juggernauts and it's yeah. so difficult for everyone. Yeah, and it is. I, I mean, honestly, I always say people that have done what you do should almost like teach on the side, <laughs> entrepreneurial, <laughs> you know, because yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of knowledge you could pass along, that, yeah, you yeah. know, because you've yeah. taken a business that was really pragmatic, 
right? Yes. And you've turned it into something really special, but it still has yeah. a little bit of that pragmatic because people are decorating Absolutely. their homes. Yep. And... Still has that. Yeah. They, you know, it's still the place to come for your Cuba cheese and yeah. deli meats. And, uh, you know, you need a sub for lunch. You can come and get that. So you're right. There's still, there's still that, um, all those things that it provides. And then there's all the, just the fun stuff and the, yeah. the kind of whimsical stuff. Yeah. So, um, now Paul, you I haven't met Paul, but so how did you get, were you guys like already married and your parents? Yes. So yeah, we had been married. Um, let's see, probably, uh, I think it was about seven years. I'm going to say, okay. and, uh, Paul's background is actually, he worked for Moog, which is the aerospace company yep. here in Elma and uh, had his career there. And um, when we bought the store, um, I worked. I worked for an advertising agency in Buffalo and had a long career with them. Well, that's and, uh, why you're so good at marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, that's I that's didn't know that. I hope. <laughs> I hope it does. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, at the time when we bought it in, in January of 2000, uh, Paul decided to leave Moog and um, kind of run the store full time with the staff there. And I continued working until about six years ago, I guess I kind of left the agency and, and, uh, then we were both in it and okay. are in it full time. Wow. Um, yeah. so, and that's a big switch for Paul too, right? Yes, I mean, definitely. <laughs> yep, definitely. Aerospace big, big, to general yeah, job. <laughs> sitting at a desk all day to, uh, yeah, to being on your feet all day and behind a counter all day waiting on people. So yeah, big sure. change. Well, there's a beauty to that too, because he's dealing with like the cutting edge high tech and then he goes yes. into this beautiful old curated yeah, yeah, shop. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah, that's very true. <laughs> I could totally see that too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. It's the same thing like your dad. He was like, man, yes. if I yeah. gotta steer another plane into the runway, exactly. I'm out of here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, You're exactly right. Um now over the years, has there been products that you've introduced that are st like really that you, that was your baby that is now taken off? Yeah, I would say there's, um, you know, from the early days when we tried to source product from, um, you know, Amish craftsmen mm -hmm. and, um, you know, entrepreneurs out of Pennsylvania, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say things like, you know, Amish made birdhouses and right. barn stars and uh, a lot of a lot of little things just over the years where we've kind of um, sought out again, different things that mm. are unique that, that kind of, and, and they've just stuck around. And, um, I'll tell you a funny story. If you, if sure. you by the counter, we have these things called the surprise box. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever tried them, but it's just a little wooden box. It's very, um, it's very nondescript okay. sitting by the register and, uh, it's a surprise box. There's two versions and people are, you know, they, we don't say anything. They just come up and they, um, go right ahead and kind of open the lid and, and, uh, our surprise. And, uh, those silly things have been going for years and years. And what is so magical about them is people just laugh and they <laughs> share with each other and they'll come up and they'll say, try this surprise box. Have you ever seen this? Go That's cool. It. You know, I don't you know, know why I've never seen, where are they in the yeah. shop? I don't know if they're I... right by the register, right by the, the first, the big register in the down downstairs so you'll have to come in and try them yeah yeah is and, that uh, so was that your idea to put those in there uh, no it was actually something that paul found and just uh thought they were cool and whimsical and yeah that's great you know, they just provide a laugh um they're funny and uh over the years you know we've sold hundreds and hundreds of them and uh people it's just one of those experience things that people remember and when they bring somebody they're like oh go try that see what's in there and yeah um yeah, and they're just they're just so fun, it. and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, the Amish maker is is like incredulous that we have sold so many of them over the years. <laughs> yeah, we just keep selling them. Uh, well, you know what's funny too, because you guys, at the end of the day, it's great when uh, retail you're, you're crossing all these boundaries in the shop. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? This isn't just mm -hmm. a straight retail experience. There are so right. many overlapping elements to that. Uh, right. whether, you know, whether it's emotional, psychological, yes, you're reliving definitely. a fine old memory or you're making a new memory, yes, uh, definitely. it's, you know, and you, I mean, it's cool. Cause I think that you really do. I know, uh, you can walk in and tell that the owners, like you, you don't have to know you, you just walk yeah. into any store like that and you're like, Oh my gosh, there's like so much love, so much care yeah. that's put into the shop on a daily basis because that's a lot yeah. of work. We, yeah, people don't realize, work, yeah. like, I think people just think retail is like, I ran retail stores, uh, for oh, yeah. large national chains. I ran yeah. groups of them sometimes and it's a tough wow. gig. Oh, you know, yeah. It's yeah. a very tough gig. Yeah. 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 You gotta love it. You can't uh you can't do it for 
for the money or do it for a nine to five. It's a, uh, it's a lifestyle. It is. That's the best way yeah. to put it too. It really yes. is a lifestyle. And I think there's yeah. no, if you're going to do it, I always say this, like if you're going to do it and nothing against corporate, but if you're going to do it, do it the way that you're doing it, you know, yeah. find something that you love, that you deeply care about that is really exactly. giving back because there's so much right. giving with that store. And right. Uh, right. You have to care about it yeah. and, and it's place in the community and, sure. and the experience that people have. I and mean, we just, I think the most gratifying thing is when, you know, we overhear people showing other people around. Um, yeah, right. Like, you, like kids. They're like here? little kids. Yeah, right? seen the <laughs> you, yeah so I think mean, that uh, to see your customers hosting other people um, is a really cool thing because it just shows that they're as invested in the business as you are and that they enjoy it and they're proud of it. And, um, you know, to us, that's the highest compliment. And how many businesses can say that, honestly? Yeah. Very yeah. few, right? And that's just because yeah. of the legacy. That's your work. It's your parents' work. Yeah. It's the previous yeah. owner's work. And it's- Exactly, yeah. You know, it's just this heritage that you have there. And you're totally yeah. right, because that's what it is. You're like, man, I got to take so-and-so here when they come into town. Right, you know? right. And then yes. for, you know that they're going back to wherever they're from and they're talking yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there aren't a lot of, of these kinds of places around anymore, so- no. Um, you know, I mean, you're really say, like, oh, I is, wish we had this in our, in our area and, and they don't. Is there a network of, sh of, uh, country stores like this? Is there some type of like, you know, I'm not sure if there's, I don't, I'm not aware of any sort of, um, uh, group or, or association. We've visited several as we've traveled to different areas in the country, but even with that, that, you know, that's a couple at most that we've sort of right. found, um, so I'm, I'm not sure if there's uh, an actual, right. you know, kind of loose organization of them or not. Oh, that that has got to be fun, though, for you to go yeah. visit other country shops. Yeah, you know? it is. We always enjoy it. See what they're, what they're doing, what they have, and we find a lot of sometimes some good ideas to bring back with us. Right, right. Um, so now coming up for you guys, I mean, you guys, are, are you in kind of just a great pattern right now? Because you spent, you know, the past few decades really getting the store to the shape that it's in and making sure that it's a fully, uh, you know, a fully realized vision, which it really yeah. feels like that. I, yeah, I feel like it is. I mean, there's still some some things we might like to do um, as we have opportunities, but we've really expanded um, into all of the areas and sort of fine-tuned our mix though we keep changing things depending on what's going out yeah well going it's on out there too, and, right? and how, yeah but um yeah you know we've uh we've been 22 years in it now and we've got a great team uh, which is is so strong and so much like family we're really lucky um, i think our our challenge is going to be who do we sell it to and how right. do we um you know, try to ensure its future survival um, and find someone who is going to love it and and uh, want to make it as successful and, and take it farther than we even have. So I think that's kind of our, our next um, agenda item is to just hopefully through word of mouth, you know, someone says, I, I, love, I love it and I want to work in this community and no. have this business and kind of keep it going. So you know, that'll, you that'll know, talking to me right now, if you stopped for one second, you know that there's like thousands of people whose Walter Mitty fantasy yeah. <laughs> right, is running that store. But yeah, the difference yeah. is the reality, <laughs> right? Yeah, Versus, yeah. So, you know, it's not yeah. for the faint hearted. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, you know, I'm sure like once that yeah. day comes, you're going to have a line out the door. You're going to have to like yeah. do psychological profiles, <laughs> different type of stuff. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to run yeah. them through the gauntlet. It'd be, yeah, like a, yeah. it'd be like a reality show. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, I, I hope it, when the time is right that, uh, sure. you know, folks come along that are, are can be as vested in it and can enjoy it as much as we have and, right. and be enriched by it as much as we have. And I think that's... Um, you know, that would be the dream. I, and that'll happen. It's such a beautiful yeah. place. And you guys have Thank done you. such a good job. And there was no way that I was going to even step foot in Marilla without you <laughs> on board. I mean, you are for, you know, whether I'm sure you like it, but uh, like it or not, you guys are the face of Marilla. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has its ups and downs sometimes. Well, it's a lot depending of on what uh, the political <laughs> issues are out there, but, uh, but right. uh, mostly it's great. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure you're like, look, I'm just trying to run my shop here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This there is enough. I don't want to get involved. Last couple years. <laughs> yeah. It, well, exactly. You're just, I'm just running yeah. my shop. <laughs> yeah. You know, yep, exactly. I mean, that's like a three, four times job a day yeah. just to try to like diversify and split yourself in enough positions to make yeah. it through the day. And then somebody yeah. comes in and yeah, gives you a hard time. You're like, I really? Know. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, a challenging couple of years, but we've done okay. And our, our folks have helped us through it. So awesome. Awesome.
Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And is there anything else? Um, we edit this. So is there anything else you want to sure. add, uh, you want to talk about that we didn't touch upon? Um, just to make sure I think that you did good. Yeah. yeah oh, it was awesome. You kidding me? You're great to talk everything. to. Yeah. You're super yeah, fun to um, talk to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think this has been great. I think it gives folks just a, a great view of kind of what we are and, and just hope that it's unique and a, a great kind of experience and destination that, uh, looking for something to do is just, you know, come on out and, uh, it's always fun. There's always something to see and it changes, um, very frequently. We try to keep it really fresh and, uh, seasonal. So there's always, uh, that would be the, we try never to let it go sort of stale. So we try to keep it fresh sure. and, uh, always something fun and new to see. That's awesome. And I love when yeah. I go in there and I love watching the people when I'm in there because you see yeah. adults <laughs> turn into kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, yeah. Like what a great environment for you. <laughs> Once got, they uh, see those candy jars, it's all <laughs> <laughs> Well, even upstairs, you know, people are yeah. like, up there, like people just yeah. have that wide eyed, like what's around the next corner type yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. The, and then they, you know, they're talking about to explore and uh, you know they get excited to see oh here's another area we didn't see on, we didn't go over here or, yeah yeah it's, it's a, a little bit of a treasure hunt and that's that's what makes it fun it makes you know people want to come back yeah well that's about it for this episode of the small town western new york companion podcast thanks for listening and remember to support the small towns of western new york in any way you can they're full of great businesses and people who would love to see you in their towns the Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast, the TV series, is a presentation of Discovering Western New York and AA Augustine Media Co. and can be found everywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you.